Hey, yo, what is up, knights? And welcome to the new series on the channel, The Arid Airways, with your host, Aegis Rick. Let me know what you guys think, any suggestions, criticisms that you might have, but basically, guys, what I intend this series to be is a podcast. Now, I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to this subject, but as far as I know, podcasts are all about just shooting the shit on some particular subject. In this case, of course, the arid airways are going to be strictly focused around DFO. Like I said, if it's not entertaining, then I won't really bother, but we'll try it out this one time and see where it goes. Alright, first topic, and really the only reason I'm motivated to start this series, Happy New Year! <laughs> We've already been a few days into it, and hopefully you guys are starting the year out right. But uh, before we look ahead into this year, let's first take a small step back with both the Christmas and New Year's, which in and of itself was pretty eventful in DFO as well. Uh, the... I guess I'm just going to throw it out there, the White Christmas buff. That's all I gotta say, the White Christmas buff. You guys already know, okay, a lot of you guys already know if you guys have been playing all of the controversy that's revolved around this whole thing. It just, it's kind of shocking to me actually how often Neopol gets themselves into just like deep, deep shit, you know, <laughs> like, you know, with the whole better than last year meme and now this year, you know, they couldn't go the end of the year without having some kind of big meme to kind of throw them off their game. Well, the white Christmas buff was it. Okay, just kind of explaining, you know, kind of like an outsider looking in kind of perspective what happened. Uh, basically, the white Christmas buff was more or less a secondary event to go along with the Christmas tree and all of the events we got going there. Uh, for four days, uh, there was going to be a really strong buff. And it's the strongest I think DFO has ever had. I mean, we've had burning EXP, we've had uh, which gives a lot of skill levels and cooldowns and stuff like that. But this also gave a ton of speed, uh, the skill levels, the cooldowns, and then on top of it, finally, well, the most abusive thing was that it actually gave a humongous drop rate increase on boss type monsters. I think is what the intention was, and this actually worked as intended okay when you killed normal bosses sometimes they drop their uh, boss uniques uh, which you can usually buy from the NPC but sometimes bosses will drop it directly uh, they were dropping that more often they were dropping more things out of the special dungeons and most importantly my guild was actually farming a bunch of guild dungeons those days because the bosses in guild dungeons also have a chance of dropping the guild accessories straight up and a lot of people got a whole lot of sets and that was kind of the real intention of what they actually intended the white christmas buff to do and it was really abusive on top of the fact they gave a ton of exp it was a great time to level your alts especially if they were level 86 before pandemonium come in, came out you're gonna have to grind and that was a perfect time to grind because it gave a ton of extra exp both mob uh, kill exp and dungeon clearance exp it was a really good buff but going back to the really important part the drop rate on the bosses right uh, it was an unintentional side effect, which basically made Toriel, which right now if you actually check the DFO Reddit, uh, Toriel has a banner. He is a, just, he's, he's this year's meme, Santa Toriel, giving gifts for everyone, gifts in shines to everyone. And, uh, you know, he was kind of killed short with some good reason, because what was happening was he was actually dropping epics at the same rate that the drop rate increase, it, it, it applied to him. For some reason. And so the epics that he dropped, dropped way more often. I'm talking 100% of the time this fool was dropping epics when you killed him. And uh, he just basically, you know, I, I made an emergency video. I, I, I have to say I played some part in this because I was like one of the first. That's kind of the thing. I got I got a lot of spies everywhere. They tell me all kinds of stuff. So I was one of the first people that was like, oh shit, <laughs> Toriel's dropping epics 100 percent or actually i didn't really know it was what the whole metrics was about it but i just knew dude if you do uh, epic road right now you're gonna get epics that was the thing so i made a video really quick i sent it out to the world i told everybody i was like dude this christmas buff is legit 50 percent drop rate when in reality now that a little bit of time has passed we know what was happening was toriel was dropping in 100 percent of the time but uh either way this caused this act caused a huge controversy and it wasn't for the sheer fact that he was dropping epics obviously every single person in the whole game capitalized on that right why wouldn't you capitalize on that we have a, a guy who's dropping epics 100 percent of the time nobody's going to complain about that but what people did complain about and what the controversy is is that 
just based on the systems that they had in the game, Epic Road existed long before the White Christmas buff. And so what ended up happening was we used up all of our invites to this dungeon far before we actually got the White Christmas buff because it wasn't intended to affect Epic Road, but it did. And so uh, we ended up having a lot of players who couldn't capitalize completely on the event. And uh, this isn't completely true because on the day that we got our White Christmas buff, it just so happened that we also got 300 Demon Invitations to go into the Epic Road. So really you had the equivalent of 12 runs in the Epic Road with the Tariel buff active. And so every character in the whole server, as long as you signed in on that day, got 12 runs in total. You can only run 10 a day, but 10 the first day, then 2 the next day. But some players got the full 20 runs for the two days that the white Christmas buff was active. So really we're talking a difference between 12 runs that they gave us to free by coincidence and 20 runs from people who uh, did not use up all of their invitations to go into the epic world. That is the discrepancy right now. So th you have one side who only gets the 12 invites and then the other side who gets the whole 20 runs. Let's just not sugarcoat this also. This Tariel buff is insane. It is the equivalent of having thousands of demon invitations. I know they gave us 300 for the event, but this Tariel buff is the equivalent of several thousand because even though you have the 300, you're not even going to get guaranteed one epic at all. But this dude was giving them epics for free. Some people got like eight epics. Bam, bam, bam. So it, it kind of makes sense why some people are kind of pissed about that. I don't want to get uh, too into taking sides, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, <laughs> this is my podcast after all, so I can say whatever the fuck I want. But on one hand, I can see where people are not okay and think it's not fair, right? Because obviously, it's not fair when one person has 12 and then another person has 20. But I think somebody laid it out very clearly and very easy. If you're not okay with uh, the guy who has 20 when you have 12, then you're straight up envious. And envy is like one of the seven sins, right? Envy is like, envy is so easy to get into, right? And you have to in, you have to try not to be envious, right? Uh, when you're doing hells all day and your friend gets freaking five epics, best in slots, and you've been running hells for hundreds of invites, it's so easy to sit there and complain like, oh, well, he doesn't deserve that. I, I'd rather I'd rather both of us not get epics than he get any epics, right? It's just like, I'd rather the whole ship fail than, you know, have somebody else succeed where I'm stuck behind, right? It's just like, this whole mentality of envy is just uh, kind of juvenile, honestly. I don't see the real complaint about it. Uh, on the flip side, though, the white knighting I saw because of because I'm on the side of yeah, you don't really complain about freebies. Come on, you, you this was obviously as we found out later a bug. It was not intended for this to happen. So if it was intended and they implemented it wrong, it'd be one thing. It'd be like, hey, Neopol, you had this event as intended, but you didn't tell us, and it wasn't intended at all. It was an accident. So the sheer fact that, oh, shit, well, that was fortunate of us to be able to get something, and then you're still going to sit there and complain about it. You know, I'm not on that side, okay? I'm definitely not going to defend anybody like that. But the white knighting I saw for Neopol saying all kinds of manners of, like, you, I can't believe you're bitching and blah, 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 and all of this, and, you know, Neopol's done great, and Neopol this, Neopol that. It was just like, fuck, dude. <laughs> I am like one of the biggest supporters of Neopol and DFO in general, but I am not a white knight when it comes to them making mistakes, right? And I think a lot of the points that are made from the envious people are pretty legitimate, right? It's like, if you wanted the, to do that, you have to, you know, tell people about it. And if it is a bug, you need to remedy it, right? You need to remedy it in a proper way. Uh, don't be like MJ and just say, oh, you know, with the glasses, deal with it, you know, because that is not a way you, you tackle a subject like this. But let me, let me be, let me kind of go on a tangent here and like on a sidetrack and remember a time where Neopol fucked me over when they did the whole server merge. And I was definitely one of the first proponents of attacking Neopol for handling the situation wrong, okay? When the server merge happened, Okay, let's let's go back in time like two years ago. Our servers used to be separated, West and East Coast, right? And we had different servers, and we didn't co uh, 
talk to each other at all aside from PvP. Uh, when they did the server merge, they decided, okay, West Coast has a smaller population. The Best Coast has a smaller population. They're joining a server with a, lo a larger population. Therefore, all the players have on the West Coast have to change their names in accordance to whatever names are available on the East server, which was just completely and utterly unfair, right? I've had my character since the game came out just as long, longer than anybody on the East server, but I have to give up my name to somebody who's acting a phony on the East server or something like that. And it was just the way that they handled it was just absurd, right? And I was just so pissed. And I was just like, and people were white knighting then. People were like, uh, East obviously has the most player base. You wouldn't be this. You wouldn't be that. You're not making any sense. East Coast has the most guys. So really, you ha you didn't make your characters before. It's just like, nothing you say at this point, you're not going to beat them. Neopold's right in every sense. And fucking their decision to do that is right. And I, <laughs> come on now, man. It's it, Don't try to shoot somebody down by like white knighting and saying that you're complaining about it, right? Because it's not like they're not bringing up good points. Coming back to the White Christmas buff, right? The guys who were complaining about the White Christmas buff were bringing up a good point and saying that they didn't really handle the situation right. They allowed this buff to kind of go on uh, unintentionally, as they said, and then they were sh fully prepared to allow people to capitalize on those eight extra runs for free. Instead, really what they should have done is snuffed it out on day two in which case everybody would have gotten the 10 and then you wouldn't have as many people as angry right you or envious i should say you wouldn't have as many people angry they'd be like okay snuffed it out uh before somebody else could get a higher benefit you know that would be the smart timing kind of thing uh, but the way that they actually responded to it was okay we're gonna let this go on for the second day, but for the third and fourth day, fuck it, we're gonna disable the Christmas buff. And we're everybody else who was getting all the other benefits that I talked about, the guild dungeons, the leveling, the you know, the easy farming on your because of all the buffs, they got snuffed out because of their Neopold's own mistake. And really it, it's just like, uh, wait a second, this was a legitimate buff that was supposed to be for Christmas and New Year's, and now you've taken it away because you Neopold, I'm talking to Neopold directly now, fucked up, right? It's like <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Why Why are we getting, uh, you're taking away events from us, right? And it's like events we've been kind of waiting for or waiting to abuse and you taking them away. There was a lot of other events, don't get me wrong, but there is some good use to it. And, uh, you know, when people brought that up, okay, well, there's their remedy. They're going to fix that. Then, you know, th some somebody would slowly and very quietly pipe up. They'd be like, hey, well, uh, Neopol, you took away the White Christmas buff. How about you give us, like, a, a Blitz event or something? And then the White Knights come in and just start freaking dominating everybody. Like, oh, what do you fuck? They don't have to give you shit. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like dude, you, you can't win, man. The White Knights are fucking defending Neopol's honor right now. And they're gonna come after you. You say anything bad about Neopole. <laughs> I just thought the whole situation was funny. Uh, I don't really take sides in any kind of public uh, kind of thing. I don't really, you know, I have a really low profile when it comes to that kind of stuff. Other people can really voice their opinions about it. And I guess I'm doing it here. But as an outsider looking in, that's kind of what the situation was on the White Christmas. Like I said, I think Neopole can handle this their PR at least, a little bit more actively or a little bit more smartly and fairly, right? How could you complain if by day two they just decided, okay, we're going to take out the component of the drop rate increase by day two and hopefully we'll get it fixed by day three and four, you know? Who's going to get mad? Because everybody on day one got the 10 runs. They should have. And everybody on day two, well, they still got a white Christmas buff. Nobody, nobody got shafted in that case. Except from the guys who weren't even a part of the situation. You know, it's just like, who's going to really complain about that? But obviously when you make the situation like this, decide to handle it later. Obviously the discrepancies there. It's just the, the management of that whole situation. Could have been a little bit better. But like I said... I'm keeping low key, and I already got my 12 runs in, so I'm pretty happy. I'm just not an envious guy. So many people are, though. So many people are. You th you talk about hell modes, and so many people are just <laughs> just talk about normal hell mode. You you can't have any day of misery doing hells. Like fuck, I I've been so dry. I I've been I used 4,000 invites and I didn't get anything without somebody out of nowhere talking about, bitch. I've already spent 400,000. Don't you fucking complain. 
I can only complain like holy shit. <laughs> the misery has to has to spread. You're not allowed to get anything good without me getting something good or we're both gonna fucking suffer. That <laughs> that attitude is just so fucking funny to me. And I hear it all the time. It that's despite what people will try to say. Fuck it. When people don't get hells, then that kind of attitude starts springing up, and that's what we saw at the right, white Christmas ball. Uh, that was a kind of a fun topic for me to talk about, guys. So that was last year. We're moving quickly, very swiftly onto this year. And sadly, we didn't get our white Christmas buff for New Year's, but we did get a petite pet. So uh, that was really nice. Uh, what petite pet did you guys choose? <laughs> this is the first question I posed to you guys, okay? Just to make sure that you're listening. Or maybe you're just listening and just fucking don't care. And maybe you think this series is dumb, but I kind of like uh, ranting about stuff like DFO related. You know, I don't think there's a lot of content out there, period, on DFO, let alone definitely not a podcast. So fuck it. W- what did you guys get for your petite gift? And if you haven't gotten it yet, it's a little too late now, isn't it? Yeah, you, you missed out on it. But basically for New Year's, everybody got a petite pet. And... uh Petite pets are really awesome. They give uh, crit damage. Pretty nice. I think it's like 8%. Usually they give a buff either in your passive or your buff skill. Your your primary buff skill. And then lastly, they actually give plus 1 to your second awakening. If your class benefits off of their second awakening skill, the petite pet is one of the only ways, ways to actually increase the level of your second awakening. It's such a high level skill that not a lot of gear in the game actually buffs that up. So when you get the pet, the best classes that benefit from it are classes that utilize the Second Awakening. I'm talking Battle Mage, who has a Tiana Transformation, Second Awakening. And uh, Berserker, a lot of Berserkers love that one because almost all of their damage comes from the Blood Ribbon. So, if you're still on the fence on whether or not to open the Petite Pet or you don't know who to give it to, if your class utilizes their Second Awakening, uh, primarily, uh, obviously every class does, but... Like, yo, Tiana transformation. You absolutely, it's it's not a question of, oh, should I get it? It's like, dude, if you don't have it, you really can't play the class. Come on, dude. You don't, you're playing Battle Mage, but you don't have Tiana? Like, this is what the Petite Pet uh, is for. So hopefully you guys are abusing that one and not forgetting to get on the right class. And if you made the mistake, you're playing Battle Mage, and you're like, oh, shit, I don't have a Petite Pet. I thought I can get away with a this pet or that pet. Uh, it's more of a swap pet, honestly. It's more of a, you know, it's not the best stat-wise, unless you don't have crit damage or something. There's a lot of better pets, especially with better skills, but this one does something that no other pet does, and that's the Second Awakening. So hopefully you guys are capitalizing on that. Moving on, guys, a quick topic of discussion I want to talk about is... Uh, Playing with a controller. In fact, I used to play uh, Dark Blood Online, which was a game very similar. It's like analogous to this game. It is very, very similar. In fact, I'm pretty sure that it was like a bootleg version of this game. But Dark Blood Online, I used only a controller and I did all of my skills with commands. This game does actually have gamepad support uh, and it's very bad. Let's just say that you can bind your keys directly. Uh, You can bind your keys directly to uh, the skills, which is nice. Like, you can bind it directly to W. And now your Joypad 9 key now actually does your W key, which is nice. You can bind them directly, but it doesn't work with triggers. I don't think it works with analog sticks. So, really, you're just, like, limited. This is a very primitive, like... 1990s fucking joystick you know like what about all of these other buttons the game doesn't recognize them so what you need to do go through a lot of effort into uh working something third party like x patter or joy to keep i like x patter personally but uh yeah you you need that extra versatility because you have a lot of keys in this game and if you want to shortcut anything and don't want to just t- do everything with command which is also an option uh, then you're going to need some other features. Uh, I like using the toggle feature. It allows me to hold down left uh, left bumper, and that changes all of my buttons that I've already pre-mapped, and it changes it basically into another layout. So by doing that, I can just swap between different uh, layouts, and I can cover all kinds of keys because of that, because you know a combination of left, left bumper and one is different from just pressing one, you know, something like that. So... I'm still playing around with it. That's kind of the thing about controllers is that 
they take a long time. You can't just say, oh, let me just plug in my controller and play it because a game like this is way too complicated, right? Also, you know, it might just be easier at some point. Okay, I'm trying to map all these hundreds of buttons. It might just be easier to learn the commands or just change the commands. If you didn't know that, you can actually change pretty much any command out there with uh, another button combination, uh, give or take. So that's kind of how controllers are. I've heard a lot of people ask about the controller support. Yes, this game does support controllers. It has inherent controller support. So you don't need Joy to Key or, or x Pattern, but I recommend it if you're getting serious with it because uh, you're going to be limited otherwise. And really, it works as you'd expect. The commands are really nice to use, and you do get the cooldown and MP reduction for doing the command, so maybe it might be up your alley. And Yeah, it's definitely, you know, I'm not going to say it's not a good game to do that on. It's just the keyboard just feels so much more natural because I've been playing it for so long. What I will not suggest, though, is do not use this game with a... Uh, joystick okay this is not a joystick type of game okay maybe you might get away with it but i've tried it just for the fuck of it and boy is it ugly so let's just uh not do that uh, last thing i've heard a lot of people like in particular out of the 50 something classes we got they really like monk with the controller they say oh yeah you can duck and sway really easily because you can map them to bumper and shit whatever okay whatever you want to do whatever trackball computer fucking input device that you want to put into your computer whatever you can get to still play do your phone a natural way to you hey if controller and lean back mode is what you want to do then by all means you can do that now when i played dark blood online the uh main i mean i i, I did everything with it i did pve and i i love the pvp in that game actually uh and i played it with the controller as well and it was just very consistent and it felt it felt like a real fighting game at that point. The PvP was a big focus, and I loved it with that game. I had I have the same feelings I had in that game, Dark Blood, uh, that I do with uh, Tekken now, which is a fi uh, actual fighting game. And uh, I want to segue that into going back into DFO's PvP scene because uh, I've s I've seen so many memes at this point about not only uh, the PvP scene but the game in general, like dead game. DFO, dead game, right? And especially DFO PvP, dead, <laughs> okay? And I think I agree with the latter a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more. I won't completely agree. This game's definitely not dead, for sure about that. This game's been lasting for three years straight. No sign of stopping with the same kind of update strategies and everything. And uh, But the PvP is a lot, uh, has definitely taken a wane towards uh, the focus. And I think even from the start, there wasn't a huge focus. And I won't say PvP is dead, okay? I want to also kind of uh, plug this in, but I yesterday I recorded a session of Quest. Quest for the Golden Cookie. So uh, I don't know when I'll upload that. Maybe once a week or something like that, we'll upload a Quest video. But i got to be consistent on those, man. i got to be consistent on a lot of different things when it comes to uploading videos. But uh, So, yeah, expect that. Uh, and I was able to record it just fine. It was actually a really good sesh. I wasn't a case of me only fighting the same guy like three times. No, I fought like seven different people. A few of them a few times, but that was probably because we were in the same rank. And this is after me not PvPing for months. I'm talking like, dude, this was just a random day. I came back from work and I was just like, dude, let me do some PvP and see if I can get any matches. And... Voila, I was able to fucking find a lot of matches and a lot of different people in a variety of classes. This goes to show that PvP has been going on constantly, constantly. Without my awareness, it's just been happening and I had no trouble finding matches. And I don't doubt that the people who are really high rank are, are going to have some trouble finding PvP. But uh, definitely was able to find some with myself so definitely not with my like measly rp okay 1400 seems to be about the sweet spot and i was finding people you know 1100 up to 1500 and even 1700 so i mean i was in like the middle zone so maybe that explained it but there, definitely pvp is still going on even if people are not uh making a big fuss about it or you don't see a lot of streams or the tournaments have died down and stuff like that okay pvp is still going on if you go in there right now you could probably still find some matches okay no matter what rank you are well what i will say though is this okay and i've felt this from the very very start of the game three years back okay the pvp 
is not dead in this game, but the PvP scene has definitely taken a humongous hit. Uh, we've had big guilds, uh, kind of people who are in those big guilds who focused heavily on PvP. Several of them are just off the map playing other games. Uh, and, and really what I mean by the scene, right, is the group of people who focused their entire efforts into PvP, right? They did the very minimum amount of PvE they needed to to be able to do PvP pretty consistently, and then they just memed it up in PvP room, right? They only did PvP, and that's what the PvP scene is, and I've played games. I know it may not seem like it in DFO, and if you, a lot of you guys only know me through DFO, uh, then you really you're not going to think any different, but... PvP was my main focus for almost every other MMO I've played, okay, uh, C9 before this, okay, I got, I started my channel with a game called Content of the Night, C9, best PvP MMO I've ever played in my whole life to this day, okay, um, and I only, I was, I was a humongous part of that PvP scene, uh, Dragoness before this, I didn't know shit about PvE at all, and when they had me doing raids, they're like, dude, you suck, you're weak, and whatever, but hey, 1v1 me, you know, cause fucking, I loved PvP in that game, and I started from the very start of that game and only did PvP on that, so, uh, Dark Blood, you know, I liked the PvE, but that ended very quickly, and the PvP scene was right where I was at, and I loved it, which, again, had a very similar fighting style to this, and the scene was there, right, the PvP scene was there, but I'm, I know I'm not focused on it as much, but I don't see the level of, like, division of the PvE and the PvP players that I did in those other games, and I think that's what's really dying a lot, is that a lot of people are more interested in other games, whereas you played C9, I bet you I go in there today and there's still a, a large group of people who would only do the PvP focus, uh, if Dark Blood wasn't shut down, I would assume that's the same thing, where it doesn't matter any time of day, I'm going to have the same five, six, seven guilds of people who are only doing that. Or, you know, they do a half and half kind of deal, but the scene here is not as, uh, if it's there, I definitely don't see it. Let me, <laughs> let me be honest. I don't see it in the megas. I don't see them in guilds. I don't see them, you know, when I go into the PvP room, I see the same people who have stuck around but the scene itself is definitely taking a huge hit with people playing other games it's hard to say what the what the real reason is because i feel like dfo's population is one of the biggest of mmos that i've played as of late you know c9's population was pretty big at one point but you know i don't think it it rivaled with dfo as it does even today uh so it's 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 odd. I mean, uh, in the Twilight Zone, where <laughs> this game has all the player base it needs, but the PvP scene is just not there, non-existent. I could attribute this to a lot of different reasons. Mainly being the PVE is such a core focus of the game, and a lot of the balance goes into it, and it is a lot of fun in the PVE aspect. But uh, you know, it may it may be a lot of different factors. It's hard to say. I know about the PvP, obviously. I. <laughs> actually went to F1, that was a big experience, maybe i talk about that one day, but uh, I really, I, I recorded a lot of footage for F1, by the way, if we're talking about PvP, I recorded a ton of footage, in fact, I think people were making fun of me, because all I was doing there was fucking shooting videos, taking pictures, and fucking, I still haven't rendered that video, it's, it's so much footage that it's daunting task to actually go through it all, anyway, I have it for my personal sake, so I can get all the juicy footage and keep it to myself, anyway, what I'm talking about here is, what was I talking about? I mean, basically, I was just saying, I know about the PvP, but I just don't enjoy it myself. And this is coming from a guy who was PvP-focused almost on every other game. I've ch changed the switch, and I became more PvE-focused and more focused on completing goals on my characters than I have been about PvP. And it's mostly personally about the game and its system itself. But I, I don't think that is the main reason why the PvP scene has taken a hit as hard as I've seen in DFO. Maybe it's people are tired of it? I don't know. This game is really old. And a lot of the legacy players that that made up 
the PvP before, maybe say in the Nexon days, they are trying to come back to the same game and it's more or less the same than what they would play 10 years ago. So maybe it's because it's old. I, I can't say that for certain because I know in other fighting games, just because it's old doesn't mean it's not a good fighting game. But uh, maybe it's because of latency lag. Okay, I can say with experience, that's why I quit playing Dragoness as a PvP game. So maybe that might be an issue. Uh, they're, they're not okay with the latency and that is kind of an issue here in DFO. Uh, when you're playing ranked and stuff, you can fight anybody across the realm, and they can, they have a really bad connection. I think that's a minor point because you can still do a lot of public rooms, you know, private rooms, whatever, to get good matches. Uh, rank isn't everything, but maybe that's a reason. It's hard to say what why people, as a community, have kind of shunned away from the PvP scene itself. I'm not seeing any tournaments. I'm not seeing the big name. The only time I see the big names come back, even temporarily are when big tournaments are announced and then they come back from not having played the game for a long time and not been a part of PvP, even if they forgot about PvE entirely. They're still not doing the practice they need in PvP uh, in this game. So uh, I say that I attribute that they're still playing games, they're just playing other ones. They're playing other, you know, other types of games and really I can't really explain much else. I'm not really I can't explain why that's the case. Maybe you guys have a real reason. My reason might be lame. Oh, it's old game. But uh, you know, remember we have a lot of legacy players who played PvP nonstop for several years. Because the games that I used to play were not as old and legacy as this game was. Okay, this game fucking ancient, man. As for me, guys, uh like I said, I wanna do at least a small portion of my channel contributed to the PvP scene. I don't want it, you know, to be as prominent as it used to be in my old days, my old younger days when I was at better reaction time. But I do want to make it a focus, and I do want to say that, you know, it's not dead. Surprisingly, I go in there and I'll be like, okay, dude, I have not said a word or gone or anything. I haven't seen anything in Megas, and I'm going to go into PvP, see if I get any matches. And I got a ton. I got a ton of matches. I gotta, I'll got be able to consistently make videos for a long time with different people playing it. Uh, so we'll we'll keep playing it. And I want to make it a focus on the channel, especially with the new classes coming out, guys. And that's going to be my segue into my last topic, guys. The Paladin and the Dragonite. Next week, actually. Next week, they're going to be getting their second awakenings. And uh, <laughs> what are your guys' opinions, first of all, before I go on a tangent on these classes? What are your guys' opinions? Uh, having played the Paladin and Dragonite both myself... Uh, which ones did you guys play? Play? Did you not play one? Did you like one more than the other? Almost certainly, I already know the opinions that you guys are going to have, but I'm kind of interested in what you guys think on both of the classes. I said it before they came out, and I reiterate this statement after they're released, okay? I believe Paladin and Dragonite both have been the most exciting thing for me from before in 2017 and it will probably be the most exciting thing for me out of all of 2018 okay remember our version of the game is always whatever six months behind the kdnf version so it's not a going to be a surprise for the kinds of content that we're getting we already know uh we already saw the winter festival i made a video on it we already see video and footage of the new grandpa class so it's not like we don't know what's coming and that being said Paladin and Dragonite have been the most exciting thing for me from 2017 all the way to 2018. I mean, this class getting released was just so high on my hype list that, you know, it's hard to beat that, man. And it lived up to expectations. I know that's going to sound really weird coming from me. I'm a very critical guy when it comes to classes. And you guys are going to be very, very critical on this class. You guys are going to pay me back for all that shit talking I did about your mains or whatever. So, Especially you with fucking butthurt Azura fans. But uh, anyway, I love these classes. And I will say that unapologetically. I, I'm not going to apologize for liking these classes. You can say whatever you want about how simple they are. Especially Paladin, let me tell you what. But uh, I won't pull any punches, by the way, on the DFO Blitz video. I'm going to wait until the second Awakenings get released before I actually make the video, but I already have a lot of things I want to talk about. And Paladin, I'm not going to pull any punches on Paladin. Paladin is fucking easy, okay? And I'm sure that's what you guys are going to be saying. Um, Paladin is just so brain dead easy and this and that. Dude, I'm not even going to fight with you, man. This class is... I have played a lot of classes in this game, and this is among one of the easiest. Not the easiest, okay? Because 
as I'll probably show, I don't know when I'll show this, but I've already recorded my Azura video. Look, there's only a few classes in the game where I can take off every piece of gear I have, probably not even attack at all, and still complete the dungeon by walking the next door. Like, hey, when it gets that easy, it makes you really wonder about the class. But, <laughs> dude, I love making enemies of fucking people who play other classes. It's like they gotta defend their right to play that class. Like, you you can't take that right away from me, Rick! They don't understand that, right? It's like, oh, somebody fucking makes fun of my class because of stupid brain dead. I'm gonna be mad and fucking shoot them down and tell them how wrong you. <laughs> it's like, dude, just play what you want, man. Nobody, Nobody's gonna be able to say anything about Paladin to make me change my mind about what I feel about it. And same thing with the Dragonite. I think Dragonite is a, a very... Uh, they did it right. I think they did that class right. I don't know what I'm looking for in a class when it when they get released. I always kind of have an idea about, about how I want them to play. Like my latest default blitz on the Shadow Dancer. I was like, you know, I want them to do this and that. But then, you know, some people actually really like the gameplay. And, uh, you know, so I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, Dragonite should have been this. But it, it's a lot of fun to play. Whatever Whatever they intended to do, I think they did it pretty well. With Paladin, fuck, they could have they could have done a lot of things better, but that doesn't make her any less fun to play. I think Paladin is a pretty solid Paladin type class, and I'm definitely enjoying her. And I cannot wait for the second Awakenings, because I'm missing a lot of damage. I've actually gotten a lot of epics. I've been doing nothing but hells, <laughs> been doing nothing but hells, and I'm actually doing pretty well. I went into Anton today, and fuck, I damage capped on some people. Like, hey, that's saying more than most people. Okay, can you damage cap? I've only had this character for a few weeks, man. I'm able to damage cap, so hopefully I can get some more sets and gear this character out. But I know my second awakening is going to give me a ton of damage. And already new skills. My second awakening is going to be stronger than the first. And I'm going to be able to damage cap again. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that. Also, the petite pets for these classes, no question about them. Both of them are really cute. Uh, they'll, probably, they'll all be in the update video, which will also, like I, I said it as a resolution of mine the recap videos okay i'm not gonna miss any update videos uh so i guess that's just a promise hopefully uh, you guys will hold me up to it but i can't miss any update videos because you know i'm gonna i'm gonna promote dfo as much as i can and last year i fucking dropped the ball let me tell you but anyway guys those are the five topics as discussed hopefully i'll have edited some timestamps or things uh for the things i discussed and uh, seriously, guys, this kind of video doesn't really work without some kind of feedback and discussion. So if you guys have got some kind of strong opinion, let us know. If you've got a topic for me next time, I want to know that. And, well, if the series needs to end, well, let me know that too. Anyway, guys, this is our first broadcast of the Arid Airways. I'm your host, Aegis Rick, signing off.